Um, thank you very much for inviting me along this evening. Great to see some familiar faces and lovely to speak to a, a local group. So yeah, Nature Trek have been offering these talks um, yeah, free talks to, to wildlife clubs um, across the country just the last sort of you know, couple of years we've been doing this. So um, I've adapted my talk tonight. It was when I do them normally, I'm sort of talking about some of our, our UK tours, my favourite UK tours. I'm going to cover some of my favourite areas, um, you know, sort of the best of Britain, some of my favourite areas for uh, to watch wildlife in the UK, areas I've set up tours to for Nature Trek and, and, and led tours to. But I've adapted it a little bit, so there'll be more time in this talk um, spent on, on looking at the local area, my local patches um, at Dowdswell and up on Cleve Common. And also a bit of, I love camera trapping, so I'm going to do a little bit on, on camera trapping towards the end of the talk, um, an, an introduction to that. And just lots of photos of wildlife moving at a fairly fast pace. So I'll just start with, um, for those of you that don't know Nate Streck, that might not, might not know us, we're, yeah, we're, we're a wildlife tour operator and we run tours across the world from weekends in weekends in the Forest of Dean, which I'll, which I'll touch on the Somerset levels, all the way to Antarctic expeditions. So you name it, uh, we do it really. And I look after a whole number of tours. I've been lucky to travel um, around the world um, with Nature Trek, lots of you know, time in, in Brazil and uh, Mount Guyana and the Caribbean as well, Borneo, um, all over the place really. Um, and we, we do what we can for wildlife as well at the same time. So we, we've got a, a carbon offsetting scheme. So we're, we basically have our own um, reserve in Ecuador now. So everyone that travels with us, we donate and we buy land. We essentially buy rainforest in Ecuador. We've got it's around 1400 acres now. Um, so we're, we're very proud of that. Um, and we also donate um, to, you know, to butterfly conservation um, through, through our, our large range of butterfly tours. Um, so there's that slide. There, there, there I am, I think back in yeah, 2018, donating you know, over, over 20,000 that year, um, we managed to generate for the for butterfly conservation. So we're very proud of, uh, of, of that work. So I usually just, yeah, start with, start with that. So the best of Britain, I, was, I chose some areas that, that, are, that, that I really love and that have, I've traveled to a number of times uh, for Nature Trek and personally. And I'm gonna start um, with an area that some of you may not be so familiar with, and then I'm gonna to come to some more familiar areas later. So I'm gonna start at, on um, the Arden American Peninsula as one of my absolute favorite uh, destinations in the UK to, to watch wildlife. Um, and that is here where this red blob is, just north of the Isle of Mull. Um, and for this particular tour, we all meet up in Glasgow and then it's around a four hour drive through the Trust, tr through the Trossachs National Park up to the Corran Ferry here and we come onto the Arden American Peninsula. And I, I just absolutely love just, you know, finding wildlife on, on, on this area. We spend around a, a week there um, visiting various different sites um, around uh, um, around the peninsula and it's just a super area just off the beaten track away from the hustle and bustle of of uh, of, of everyday life it's just a, it's just a magical place so the the the, the tip of arden and here is actually the westernmost point on the on the british mainland and you really do feel sort of cut off from um from the mainland although obviously of course you're not it's it's not it's not an island we have mull um just to the south here um, and uh, and Loch Sunart running through here. So it's a super area. We base ourselves in Glen Borrowdale um, and just explore the area from there. Um, it's a lovely base that we use, a um, lovely sort of house party style atmosphere. We take over the whole the, the whole place, surrounded by lovely, uh, lovely habitat. There I am down here, probably scoping some crossbills or, or siskins up in the, yeah, up, up in the, 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 the conifers uh, um, around, the, around the base and around, 100 meters from um, the, the, the Glen Borrowdale Lodge that we stay at, you've just got views like this of lovely um, flat calm lock and just scanning for, for otters or eagles drifting overhead or divers out on the water. And it's just a beautiful place, just a stunning scenery around every single corner. Now, one of, the, the, one of our focuses of, of, our, of our Scotland's mammals tours is to do just that, is to get close to the mammals um, and, uh, and and get really good views of them. I've got a few slides of otters tonight. I'm a big fan of, 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 of otters and it's a fantastic place to see them. And pretty much on every trip, we, we get to spend some quality time with, 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 this, with, with this amazing uh, mustelid. So here's a, a mum and, and a youngster here from a, from a, um, a recent tour up on, Arden, up on Arden Merck. And it's one of the first places you managed to get tours going again after, after COVID. We of course couldn't do anything when yeah, everything was shut down and then I remember we, we were able to operate from you know from last year to things started to open up and we managed to get some groups back then it was just brilliant having photos sent back in from the field 
Um, all the slides I'm using tonight are either taken by tour leaders or, or group members um, or by myself. Um, none, none of them are stock images or anything like that. So lovely close up here of, of, of these fabulous otters and occasionally they'll come onto land and and, and St. Mark or Sprint as they call it on open on open uh, you know, rocks and, uh, and, and obvious points. And they're just brilliant to watch constantly um, feeding them need to eat an awful lot every day. Um, prolific hunters always coming up with something whether it's a fish or a, or a crustacean or something and they're just just brilliant to watch. So we'll just spend time with with the otters of Arden American um, just just enjoying them. And then when I first went to Arden American back in 2013 shortly after I joined Nature Trek the tour was in its infancy. We'd run it a couple of times, but we, you know, we were just sort of piecing it together a little bit. We wanted to figure out the sort of status of Pine Martin, um, how many were coming in, and, uh, and and how we could get sort of good views of them. Um, so I set up the, the camera trap, looking at the bird table, um, and, uh, and yeah, we 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 realised there was three animals coming in, um, sort of yeah, each, each night. Um, it was uh, yeah, fantastic. So each Pine Martin would have a sort of individual sort of patterning on the neck um, and marking so you can tell the individuals so this one's performing beautifully um showing showing it's uh, it's it's sort of throat there and uh, that little mark there at the top is uh, is just quite distinctive so we had three different animals coming in and it was a yeah a great start and then dr during the week they just became more and more sort of you know you're used to the there's a, there's a very light you know, an outside light which they sort of you know became used to and we'd leave peanuts out for them and eventually they became yeah very confident and I made what is now the legendary Pine Martin run that we make each time we visit and a little trail of treats um, all the way up to the windowsill of, our, of, of the accommodation there. So you can get stunning close-up views of, of, of Pine Martins. They're just, just fantastic animals. I've been lucky to travel around the world searching for mammals and birds and butterflies and, 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 you, and you know what, but being sort of a couple of inches away from a Pine Martin, just your nose up against the window and a Pine Martin just the other side is just awesome. Um, so I had to definitely put that into my my, my sort of best of, of British wildlife experiences. So they're they're, they're omnivorous. They're, they'll they they'll, they'll, they'll take um, they're they're officially list, you know listed as a carnivore, but they will but they're very very wide range ranging um, diet from yeah you know, birds eggs and birds themselves to to you know fruits and nuts particularly in the autumn um, and, and, and winter and, and small mammals as well and. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing really, really well. And of course, I, I heard you discussing earlier, you know, the, the Pine Martin, the Forest of Dean now, which I'll, which I'll mention again later, but hopefully they'll come in and have an effect on the gray squirrel population, but they've been shown, you know, they've, you know, they've lived alongside red squirrels for hundreds and hundreds of years and, uh, and they, they, they don't impact them at all. So fingers crossed, they might be able to come in and, and have a bit of an impact on the grays, but what an amazing animal. Just a couple more. Pine Martin slides. They they are quite partial to a bit of a jam sandwich, a little treat when we visit. When the Nature Trek group gets there, they they pop out and uh, enjoy that. Lots of other great mammals, you know, mammals on Arden American. Big herds of, of 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 red deer coming right into the grounds um, around our accommodation, and just lovely, lovely views. As I was, uh, yeah, as I was uh, yeah, mentioning earlier, just everywhere you go, it's just rugged landscapes. The Highland cattle, of course, um, out on the out, out on the peninsula. So onto the Isle of Kana. This is a this is a view from the from the very very small island of Kana. We have a half a half a day we spend here, um, just walking around, um, scanning the scanning the area and just the whole range of wildlife. That might be it's a it's a good place to scan for for raptors, of course, white-tailed eagle and golden eagle drifting over, and occasionally hen harrier and, and short-eared owl um, as 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 well. Um, and, and offers, of course, in the lock. And it's a uh, nature trek tours. We enjoy everything we come across, um, not just the, the you know the birds and mammals. Scotch argus, one of the one of one of the special butterflies we can you know we can uh, find up there. Of course, quite widespread when you get up into that into that area. But very exciting for for uh, for anyone coming from from further south. So we'll enjoy yeah, enjoy finding finding them, and uh, and just spending time with the different areas. So the, as I said, the the lighthouse is the most western point. On the on the British mainland, and we'll have sea watching sessions from from here, looking out over the over the water for shear shearwaters and, um, and and skewers and pods of bottlenose dolphin and, and common dolphin occasionally as well, um, and occasionally basking shark and, and minke whales. It's a very good place to scan um, the open seas, and there's often a flock of twite hanging around the the lighthouse there, and, and yeah, just lots and lots and lots to enjoy. This is. 
you know, Sana Bay, beautiful white sandy beaches and love and you know, beautiful blue water. So it's just it's a it's an area with you know breathtaking you know beauty and and uh, and amazing landscapes as as well as the uh, as well as the special wildlife. And we just enjoy some you know some lovely walks, um, exploring exploring the area, looking out towards Muck and, and Eag in the you know, in the in the distance there, scanning the Hebridean seas. As I was saying, the eagles are a real feature. White-tailed eagles have done very, very well. Um, they're, they're, they're ever increasing and they're actually breeding on Arden America now. They were released onto Mull um, a number of years ago and then birds have moved across from Mull um, and, uh, and have taken up residence on, on Arden America itself. So it's pretty much a daily um, encounter now, these huge birds, the flying barn doors just drifting overhead. And this is a youngster, um, a young bird here, and yeah, a sort of wedge-shaped wedge tail, really broad, um, wide wings you know absolute monster of a bird and golden eagles as well you mull is a, is is as a as a very good um population they don't drift across quite so much although it's so close um then they're not, they're not as easy on our american but we do see them on on most visits um the, the magnificent golden eagle we're, we're heading out to sea uh, a, a real highlight is getting out and spending a whole day at sea um, out in the open waters a gannet of course drifting overhead and we'll search for them. there'll be you know great skewers or bonkses as they call them up there of course hanging around the back of the boat and and, and pods of, of, of um, common dolphin as well often coming up just to you know riding the bow and they're very very fertile sea there's always something to enjoy there might be you know petrels and, and sheer waters um cruising past the boat but it's great fun and if you're lucky enough to have flat calm water which is a big ask if, at times on the on the west coast, the wild west coast of Scotland, you have a chance of seeing um, a minke whale as well. Some are visitors to the waters there, so usually from sort of you know, you know from you know, July, you know, or July, August, September is a, is a very good time um, is a, to to see them passing through. And um, one of our you know the smaller baleen whales um, that will come through um, come through our waters, and always a special encounter. And then the second largest fish in the world, the basking shark. Again, is 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 a you know is a you know a, a good chance. We've had good success over the over the years, but they're very very hit or miss. I often get asked, you know, what are my chances of seeing a basking shark? And it's just so hard to say. Um, the water temperature needs to be right. The plankton needs to be high in the water, um, and then you'll you'll see them near the surface feeding. Um, and near the around the Isle of Col, sort of in August and September, is some of the best one of the best places in the world to to see to see basking sharks. And we're quite close on Arden American to Col. But again, it's just so it's so hit or miss whether they whether they come into the waters when we're when we're out out and about at sea. But we we have a pretty good strike rate, and it's it's looking for that just you know the dorsal fin and the uh, and the tail fin breaking the surface. when um, there's a, an amazing gap in between the two of them. I mean, this one's evidently feeding under the water now. His mouth the mouth would be a gape as it you know filter feeds the plankton. Um, amazing animals. It's one of my ambitions is to actually get in the water with them. I've seen them a couple of times, point blank range from a boat, but I've not been in the water with one yet. But I'd love to love to do that. Seeing some of the you know the birds and the breeding plumage we, where we used to, you know, we'll get to the coast um, and see red-throated divers on passage or in winter, but it's just a different uh, a different bird when you see them in their amazing breeding um, plumage here, and they're quite common on the you know on the on the water bodies, the locks around Arden America and just. Uh, yeah, just in the, in the sheltered areas there. Beautiful red-throated diver. And it's a good place to try and find checkered skipper up on Arden American. Um, sort of, yeah, end of May, first couple of weeks of, of June, typically um, on, on Arden American. There's a couple of sites that we, that, we, that we reliably find them. So if you do visit and you're after you know, trying to catch up with uh, this little gem of a butterfly, we can, we, you know, we, we can, uh, we can find them up there um, at, at that time of year. Lovely, lovely little thing. Um, and pearl border fritillary as well as a chance of, of those up on our American. So a wide range of different species and, 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 and wildlife to enjoy. Now, when I was thinking of um, when, when I'm you know, covering the best of British wildlife experiences, you know, there's, there's an awful lot, of course, but one that sprang straight to the, the sort of top of the pile for me was, was visiting a bustling seabird colony. And I'm sure you've all experienced that, but heading out and we head out to the Treshnish Isles, you know, it's quite a you know, short hop from our American. And make uh, and, and, and cruise around Lunga and Staffa and make make a landing as well and get in amongst a bustling seabird colony is absolutely awesome. Um, the, you know, there's the sight, smell, smells, the, just the just everything, the, the the noise, 
the, the whole experience is, is just, um, it's just, just brilliant. So here we have you know, thousands of guillemots um, and, and there'll be razor bills in there as well and, and puffins up on the grassy, grassy banks here and, and, and shags and formers, um, kitty wakes and bonkses patrolling around them. It's just all, it's all, you know, all go and just so much going on. And it's, it's, it's a super experience to, to just sit in amongst the, you know, on, on the island just, and just take it all in. Um, it really is, really is superb. There's a, a shag here in, in breeding plumage, that beautiful green eye. Um, the lovely you know, sheen they have on them, the little crest, um, lovely birds, and often used to people walking, you know, right past them. They've, they've had you know, visitors for, for for many many years, so they're not bothered at all, and we'll just let people have a have a you know a very very close view, and are not disturbed at all by you know, by the visitors. And of course, puffins, you know, what, you know, what, what, a, what a special bird, and uh, and, a, and always an absolute thrill to to see them and, and get up close to them, and um, which which we can do there in in you know spectacular um, scenery all around as well. Lovely, lovely close up of Atlantic fin. I um, mean, if you, another another highlight of the, of the calendar year in, in Britain, of course, is the, the rutting red deer. And Arden American's a fabulous place to visit at the end of September, early October to watch the, the stags in their, you know, in their absolute finery and uh, you know, roaring and bellowing just outside and around the, around our base. It's, you're sort of woken by them in the morning, just bellowing away really really impressive and a lovely photo that was sent in last year from a visitor of um, just the just the typical um, you know, landscape around Arden America and I'll finish just with a group um, enjoying the, the wilds and headed, looking out into the Hebridean Sea so that was my number one sort of best of British destinations I, I love it up there if you get a chance to get up onto the west coast I, I highly recommend it and it can be tied in with with a visit to Mull so if you're looking at a you know, a little break in the in the UK. You can as a, as a you know, ferry you can take just a half an hour or so from from Mull to uh, to Arden American and do a little circuit. It's a really really um, cracking cracking trip. So from Arden American to the Forest of Dean, um, I'm going to jump a, quite a way south into one of you know one of one of our local you know hot spots in, in an area I you know I love visiting. When I joined Next Trek in 2013, we didn't have a we didn't have a tour to the Forest of Dean. I thought, oh, what's going on here? There's so much to enjoy in the Forest of Dean. Let's set up a tour um, and, uh, and set up a yeah, two-night um, two little weekend trip. Um, I've, I've led yeah, many, many groups there since. We now do day trips as well. Um, so when we couldn't run any overnight tours with all the hotels shut, um, I was desperate to get away from the, from, from the emails. So, so uh, yeah, started off the day trips um, and, um, they've, and we now have day trips dotted around all over the country. Um, so if you, you, know, you can, can look those up if you fancy a, fancy a little uh, yeah, a day trip with us. But it's a, yeah, I absolutely love visiting. And every time you go, I find you just see something new, something different. And it's, it's just always, you know, always a, a, yeah, a brilliant experience. So I, I cut out my maps when I'm talking to other groups, but you all know. <laughs> so I had no need for that. But yeah, we base ourselves at the Speech House, which you'll all be uh, familiar with, right in the heart of the forest. And I, I, um, a comment I get a lot from, from from people is just you don't need, you know, there's very little driving around. Lots of time we'll just be, you know, just go walking distance from the from the speech house, and you just obviously straight into um, into the forest, you know, into the habitat and and, and finding wildlife. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's great fun. And there is the there is the speech house, of course. So around 45 you know, um, square miles across of uh, of, um, of a forest, a real mix of coniferous and and, and deciduous woodland, second largest tract of, of ancient forest outside of the new forest um, in, in, in England. Um, and uh, yeah, such a lovely range of habitats, of course, you know, your forests, your open glades, um, you know, the, 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 the rivers running through, the, the, the ponds and lakes. There's so much to enjoy. And of course, the birds, the mammals, the butterflies, the dragonflies, there's, there, there's something right throughout the season. So we, we, we visit in in, in winter and spring um, and, and summer as well and there's there's yeah there's there's, there's an awful lot to uh, to enjoy and it's a very popular tour we run tours to you know the mega uk destinations for, for for you know particularly for birding in norfolk and i also have a bit of a joke with colleagues that i've that i've sent more people to the to the forest of dean um since you know, you know since i joined nature track than 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 uh, than our norfolk tours for instance and uh, yeah they they're always uh, they're, all, they're all surprised that but it's a very very popular popular place to visit and I've uh, yeah we've we've taken lots of people there um to to enjoy the wildlife 
the one thing I'll do in the winter is just go out with a bag of seed and just walk out at maybe at Cannock Ponds and just throw down some some seed and watch the sort of common woodland birds come in in the winter. I just love the turnover of of species that just come piling in almost instantly around your feet. Lovely nuthatch here, um, of course. I um, mean, just just learn the the the, you know, the the common woodland birds to start with, then start looking at your your slightly more scarce and, and unusual unusual species. Marsh tit um, here coming in. Um, used to go finding you know finding willow tits uh, as well, but you know you know sadly. Um, you know, not so anymore, um, but um, yeah, lovely marsh tit there. Tree creepers, just a number of tree creepers. People often comment, wow, there's just so many, many of them, and they're very, very numerous. Lovely little birds creeping up and finding insects in the in the lichen-covered branches. And it's brilliant, of course, for your for your winter, you know, your, your, your wintering finches, your, your, your finch flocks. I think our most popular time of year to visit seems to be um, you know, through through the winter, um, when lots of the finches are coming in from Europe, um, to feast on the on the bounty of food that can be that can be found in the forest. Lots of brilliant food trees on alders and um, you know, on, and larch and, and and yew trees and hornbeam and beech. Lots of these these fantastic food trees. Lovely male siskin here. You have to get big flocks of of, of, of siskins, uh, red poles in amongst them often. Um, and, and a big draw is, of course, hawfinch, our largest UK finch, and a bird that I probably spent more time tracking down and getting to grips with probably than, than any other um, so since I was you know, you know, first able to you know, sort of take an hour as a kid trying to see you know, hawfinches, and then once I could drive there myself, heading, and heading there and just tracking down hawfinch and seeing some big flocks over the years, you know, flocks of four, you know, 30, 40 birds. Um, um, over the years is, is amazing. We look at the big, heavy, silvery bill um, and just a, a lovely male here, more sort of brightly, you know, you know gingery colour on the on, on the face. But, um, you know, a really special bird and a very good year for them this year, actually. There was that invasion year, you know, three or four winters ago. But this year has been, been very good. I, had, um, I was leading a day trip just before Christmas and we had over, you know, I counted at least 31 birds coming out of the of the, of the of the yew trees down around Park End, which is quite a hot spot, um, and a few more up around up around the church there. So really, you know, good numbers. Um, and of course, they're bolstered in the winter with birds coming in from Europe, but they breed um, in the you know in the in, in the forest as well. And on a on a spring and summer visits, you know, occasionally see you know see young birds, or they go incredibly um, elusive once they settle down for breeding. Of course, as as all birds um, will do. Crossbills as well. Um, we'll, we'll we'll try and find um, you know, flocks of crossbill and you know, a chance throughout the year. And they breed very early in the year, so they'll they'll already you know, have have nests with young at, th at this time of year. Um, and uh, yeah, really special birds. So like we're right, left, and right-handed, the, the mandibles of the crossbill will, will cross either the, the the right or the left-hand side. And you can see this this male here, beautiful red male, just tweezing some um, seeds. From this uh, from this larch cone, just the male bright red and the females that sort of yellowy, you know, greeny yellowy color. Beautiful brambling again, a very good year for, for brambling this winter. Good numbers of them. Lovely male here. Again, it varies from year to year, of course, with the with the sort of uh, food availability in Europe. How many come across um, to to spend the, the the winter in our in our parts? But it's always a treat when you uh, you know when you uh, when you stumble across a flock of brambling or get one coming into the garden. Um, special bird. Now, a bird that I usually say, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll have a very good chance of seeing on our winter visits is the great grey shrike. But this year, for, for the first year for a number of years, it, uh, it, it didn't return to its fame, favourite haunts. But um, over the years of, 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 of taking people to the forest and getting to grips with, uh, with the movements of the great grey shrike that, that, that winters there, and um, one year there was up to you know, up to up to three birds a few years ago. It's a it's it's a it's a real highlight normally of a winter visit. You know, cracking a great grey shrike, the butcher bird, of course, as, as they're called, and they'll larder their prey. Um, so they'll, they'll they'll catch lots when the going's good, um, and then you know, larder that prey for when the when the weather is 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 harder and, and finding food is more difficult, and they can fall back on um, on on that food. So this again, this was taken by you know by group members. Um, you know, this this bird had, had skewered a, a small mammal. I think that was a, a, a vole there, but this is certainly not a vole. This is a, probably a wood mouse that was skewered onto a bit of a, 
black form, a bit of a grisly photo, but but a, but a fascinating one. And there's a couple of, of, of you know of bushes, hawthorn and black blackthorn bushes, um, on one of the glades there that they sort of use ev that it uses every year. And it's amazing the different species that we've that, that we can find on there. There's been you know siskins and goldfinches and bumblebees and lizards and newts, stone chat, um, you know, voles and mice. Lots of different prey items have been have you know have been you know impaled on these on, on these bushes for the shrike to come back to so fascinating bird that we, that we that we try and catch up with during the winter months so again they'll just come in from from eastern and northern europe for the for the winter and then in end of march sometimes creeping into april we'll head off and um, and breed again head off back into europe lesser spotted woodpecker still um yeah, still holds on um, in the, in the forest a few a few territories that we yeah knew, knew about last year and uh, yeah you know, special bird you just need a lot of luck to see i'm often asked on the first evening what would you most like to see and this is often high on the wish list um, and you just need that you know an early start is is, is required and, a, and some, nice, some nice weather and in sort of yeah from from now onwards really it's less a spot season now and listening listen for that distinct drumming um, and i'll touch later on my one of my highlights during during the lockdown was was finding lesser spotted woodpecker a little closer to home than than the forest of Dean, but one of my absolute favourite birds we can we can find there. Lovely view along the along the River Wye from Simmons Yat, of course. And one of the first places I went as a, as a kid to, uh, to to see peregrines. Of course, we're we're treated now across the the country really with having peregrines on lots of our churches and um, and, and cathedrals and, and, and large buildings in in most cities now. But I remember that was the place to go and and still is to get fantastic views of, of peregrine. And this was actually a photo taken on the of a peregrine on, on Christchurch a little you know a little closer to home, able to get up and have a good close look at them. Amazing birds. And the, an incredible range of prey they they take as well. And interesting the studies of their of their of their behaviour of taking birds at night and some of the species that have been found in uh, in uh, you know in, in their nest sites. The wild boar, of course, the forest loved by the loved by the visitors. And one of the reasons that lots of people, you know, you book to, to visit the Forest of Dean um, with us is to try and see the wild boar. Um, but the locals, not such a not such a fan. It's quite it's quite funny when we when we get into conversation with with the locals about the forest, uh, about the boar, and tip tends to be, yeah, not 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 so in favour of them. But there's there's thought to be around 12, 1300 animals now. Um, I remember when I first visited, it was ever so exciting to see some um, you know some turnings where the, the boar would root up the ground. Now it's pretty unusual to see any any grass that hasn't been turned over by the uh, by the boar. But I, I I love them. I still get a I still a thrill when you catch them in the spotlight. And we'll go out um, at, at uh, yeah at, at night in during the winter months and uh, and have a little spotlight for them. Big big sow here caught in the spotlight. And um, yeah, they're a yeah a, an amazing species and which I yeah I I I, I enjoy seeing certainly. A fellow deer. Um, of course, can can be seen, and in more recent years, uh, Munt, Jack, and Roe have started to move into the sort of heart of the forest as well. I've noticed it took a long while to before seeing Munt, Jack on the tours, and then we start to see them quite regularly now, certainly moving in. And in the spring and summer, species like pied flycatcher here, red star, wood warbler, um, birds will come back in from Europe. Um, and this bird um, um, photo was taken at Nags Head, of course, where they study the pied flycatchers, and they're Typically between 20 um, and, and, and 30 pairs now at, at Nags Head, um, which has been fairly stable for the last sort of seven or eight years. Of course, there was more, there was, you know, around you know, 20, 25 years ago, you're looking more around the around the 100 pairs. There's been a dramatic decline, as um, which, which is you know, see, you know, very sad and has been seen in other areas as well. But they've, ten, they've stabilized, it seems, um, around between around the, between 20 and 30 pairs there. In more, in more recent years, a lovely little bird that'll be back in um, before we know it. Sort of mid-April normally, they'll be they'll be back on territory. Wood warbler had really great great wood warbler sightings last year. Their numbers are um, yeah are, you know, are decreasing as well, sadly. But we we still find them in the forest, and, and it's amazing when you hear that trilling call. One of the absolute highlights of the of the of the spring and summer for me is going to the forest and hearing that firecrest doing well. Their range spreading north, little gem of a bird breeds quite, you know, you know, good numbers now in the forest. I mean, ever increasing numbers as a as a 
as a breeding bird. And an amazing experience heading out um, night charring in the forest. Again, when I think of special experiences in the UK, going out night charring is, 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 the, is, is, is right up there for me. Um, different every time. This is last year. I was lucky enough to see one um, before it took flight, blending in with the top of that, uh, that tree stump there. And the males will you know, start, uh, start churring and displaying wing clapping. Um, all around, you know, flying overhead, and the U's and R's you get from people that have not experienced that before is, is is amazing. They really are a, a you know a special bird. The males with the white patches in the wing and the and and, and the tail, um, you know, displaying um, for a mate. So um, yeah, what a what an amazing experience that is. Often with woodcock flying by as well. So it's yeah, it's a you know, fantastic experience. Got a couple of really nice rides, of course. That, um, some some good sites for for, for for scarce species such as such as wood white here, um, and and small purblood fritillary at the right times of year, of course. So we've got so much interest um, in the forest, which you'll of course you know, you'll of course know about and will have will have been and experienced. Um, and I love my snakes, I love my reptiles, and, and it's a super place now. First few records now of of, of adders coming out of hibernation, and this uh this, this young male who was was seen on a slope up to New Fancy. Uh, viewpoint uh, a few years ago and last year they even put out um yeah, sort of um yeah barriers to stop people getting too close to the favorite favorite site so it really is a um, a hot spot for adders up on up, up on new fancy so i've got to yeah get over there soon and, uh, and and see them again so a whistle stop through the forest of dean i know lots of you'll be more fam familiar that, um, with it than i am of course but uh um, yeah, one of my absolute favourites, and I, I love uh, I love taking people there and, and showing them around. So a little further south, um, to the Somerset levels, before I get onto the really the, the really local um, yeah, you know, local sites, um, absolutely love visiting the Somerset levels, and it's an area again that I've, I've led tours to and, and visited a number of times, and it's just got better and better and better over the years. Even you know in the fairly short time I've been in nature, like each time is um, yeah, it's, it's just seems to yeah improve and uh and, and the, the you know incredible number of birds there and i've been you know you know leading in europe quite a bit and, and down around the camargue in, in southwestern france it reminds me of that heading to the heading to the levels and these vast reed beds and, and waterways and, and channels and and just teeming with with, with birds and and and, you know, and life of course and lots of a sort of mosaic of of of, of of, um, of habitats and also of, of reserves all managed by different organizations, whether it's the Wildlife Trust or RSPB or, or Natural England, lots of different organizations manage the, the different sites. Um, and, and where the, some of the sites were, were previously used for, for peat excavation, they've left lots of these islands you can see here. Um, and, and these islands are perfect for, for birds to breed on, and of course, but you know, predators can't get to them. So you think, you know, species like marsh harrier and and bitterns um, of just in ever increasing numbers. So it's, it's, it's brilliant to see. And it's lovely to see the stats each year of, of birds you know, increasing in their, in their number. So it's a, it's a brilliant place. So again, you're, you're, I'm, I'm sure you'd have you know, visited the area. So just this vast floodplain of the River Axe, the River Brew and the, and the Parrot. Um, and again, in, in winter, big numbers of of wildfowl and, and waders will you know will, will, will spend the winter here, and then in the in the breeding season the reed beds are alive with all the warblers and um, it's you know, a good place for for cuckoo and, and lots of different species. It's a yeah it's a it's a really fabulous area. And the contacts to the south and the Mendips to the north and we, we base ourselves on wells and then it's a short um, yeah and then cover the area area from uh, you know, from there. It is a starling of course and one starling is a a really lovely bird when you when you see starlings in you know up to sort of five six seven hundred thousand birds um is is quite amazing and definitely a one of the one of the best spectacles of, of wildlife in in the uk which you know yeah i'm sure you've been out and experienced absolutely amazing the sky being full of starlings coming in to roost um, in the evening in these in these vast reed beds on the somerset levels really spectacular um, and if there's a bird of a raptor around, you know, you know, peregrine or sparrowhawk going through them, or even just a buzzard cruising nearby, they'll swirl around and make these amazing shapes. Um, it's different every time. Sometimes I'll come straight into the reeds, you know, and just 
you know, fly very low and dive straight in. And other times I'll twist and turn and make these amazing shapes before sort of cascading down into the into the reed bed. So I, yeah, it's it, it, it's a, it's a fabulous experience. Um, and uh, yeah, one one when I yeah absolutely highly recommend. And one one of the things that's slightly o overlooked, um, I, I think, is the morning rise coming out of the reeds. What we'll what we'll do is we'll see where they've gone down in the evening and then go back for first light um, and just watch them, you know, just literally scatter in all directions. You'll hear an ever increasing noise, the more chattering away in the reeds. And then poof, they just launch in every single you know, direction to bamboozle any po possible um, predator to go out and feed on the on the farmland um, around ar around the level. So it's a yeah, fabu fabulous experience. I love my wildfowl. I, I, I volunteered for, for 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 a while, for years at Slimbridge, and, and, and worked there for for a short time as well before joining Nature Trek. Um, and again, it's a brilliant place to go to see to see a wildfowl. A lovely flock of um, widgeon here, and a, a sort of a typical scene from one of the um, you know for, from from one of the reserves. Lots of widgeon and teal and sh um, shoveler and gabwall, and there'll be um, beautiful drake pintail here in, in amongst them as well. It's a really great place to go for your for your, for your wildfowl and wintering way. There's big numbers of gold and plover and um, and, and lapwing, and uh, yes, yeah, some similar scenes to that you can that you can see at uh, at Slimbridge, of course. Big big numbers that they that they, they, they hold there. It's been improving for bearded tit as the reed beds have matured and and and, and developed a very good um, yeah the, the growing population of, of bearded tit, and we're certainly seeing them more frequently on our um, on our visits. Um, cracking bird for male um, bearded tit here um, and cranes as well um, yeah it was the the great crane project um, that's about Slimbridge it was uh, happening while I was you know while I was working there the eggs being brought over from from Germany and the, the cranes reared at Slimbridge and then were released down onto the Somerset levels so it's a, a fairly frequent sight now to see these uh, these amazing birds um, down down on the levels um, yeah it's a, a a real treat and as I said bitterns their numbers are um, are, are, are ever increasing, which is which is fantastic. So really, a, a really super place to uh, to visit. And as I was saying, it feels European. Um, the way the with the gradual warming and the, and the, and the sort of northward shift of some species um, down the levels now. You can this is a, a little bittern that I saw quite a number of years ago. Um, they they they've bred there along with great white egret have colonised now and are very commonly seen. Um, there's you know, purple heron sightings. Black winged stilts breeding not too far away. Um, glossy ibis seen regularly. Cattle egrets, over 300 cattle egret counted recently. Um, amazing how these birds are, um, are now, you know, quite common in quite a short space of time. They're really colonised and and sort of well, not common, but increasing in increasing in numbers and colonising. Um, amazing. And marsh harriers, beautiful marsh harriers, a very very common sight, floating around over the reeds. Um, in, uh, in, in good numbers there. So that's just a, a, a bit of a shortened version of my sort of highlights of you know the the, 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 the British tours that we that we run. We run an awful lot of UK the UK trips. But those are some of my favourite destinations. And just for the rest of the the, the talk, I'm just going to to touch on um, the joys of working your local patch. I'm not needing to really travel anywhere um, just to get a lot of enjoyment from 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 finding wildlife. And uh, so yeah, my my, my, the patch that I've probably watched most over the years, because it's closest to home, um, is 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 Dowdswell, Dowdswell Reservoir. I mean, it's been at times a pretty for those of you that know it, it's uh, a bit of a bit of a hard slog at times. There's often not much at all there, but it's been it's been you know great fun over the years finding finding wildlife there, and and, and it's and it, it, it it's great working around patch because it's your area, and maybe not many people will watch that area. Um, you can watch it regularly enough to see how things change and um, how habit, the habitat may develop or, you know, the, the comings and goings of, of, of everything that's happening there. So here's a, um, um, a yeah, great crested grebe, of course, taking, trying to take down a, um, a, a tench there. So there's, 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 fi there's, there's, there's fish in Dalswell to support birds, um, of course. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunately for, for diving ducks in particular, there's a lovely tufted duck here. Their numbers seem to have, 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 have dropped off at Dowdswell over the years. Um, but then other birds, as I'll touch on, have, have moved into the reed beds that have been you know, developing. So it's been interesting just to watch it change. 
um, and, uh, and, and, and develop over the years. I found a bird book the other day, actually. I was going through my, my collection. We've recently moved house. I've been moving my you know, large, huge collection of bird books. And scribbled in the back was 24th of February. Um, what, what, what year was it? It was, I think it was, yeah, it was, I think it was about, about 20 years ago. Um, to uh, 2012 and it had yeah it was, it was about a dozen potchard um you know about 20 tufted duck there was you know quite a number of mallard on there two goosander i thought blimey so when i was down there on my you know i was yeah 16 and there was all these birds and i, and I, don't, I don't know quite what's happened to this i think there's a big lots of carp in there now which i think has had a, quite an impact less you know less for the for the for the species to, to feed on there's not much weed like there used to be but occasionally you will still will still see tufted duck. But it's quite quite exciting now, sadly, uh, down as well. Um, but there's still lots to enjoy, and I still like getting up there and being pretty much the only one to uh, to make to, to to make an effort to uh, to keep an eye on it. Um, kingfishers outside the breeding season, they 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 they, they, they don't breed, um, you know, in the Dalswell area because there's not sort of banks for them um, to breed. I think they have attempted to in the in the top section once, but. Uh, yeah, they, they'll breed on the chelt and often I've seen them you know, catching fish on Dowdswell and, and flying overhead, heading towards Charlton Kings to a, to a nest site um, you know, on the chelt. And now outside the, the breeding season, they're seen fairly frequently. Um, so this is, a, this is a youngster that was a couple of years ago on the, one of the, on the top pool. You see the tiny little white tip on the bill and sort of you know, duller um, plumage generally. So we can, we can enjoy, um, yeah, you know, kingfishers there, snipe still occasionally. Um, you know, we'll, we'll drop in in the winter. Usually, you know, three or four snipe will you know will, will winter. Um, it does look very tricky to see in the vegetation at the sides, but but they you know, you know but they are there. And a couple of years ago, even a you know even a, even a jack snipe there as well. Um, and as the reed bed has developed at the very top, there's at least you know, five singing um, you know male reed um, reed warblers last year. So they've 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 moved in and colonised, um, and Chetty's warbler as well had a, had a few records of. So birds are moving in there and finding, um, finding the habitat, um, and 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 reed buntings as well. There's quite a roost of, of reed buntings. I've counted over over 40 birds in the evening coming in and roosting in the in the reed bed um, there at the top, which is getting bigger and bigger, um, and uh, and also breeding there as well. Um, um, reed buntings. So their numbers are their numbers are on the up, but it seems to be that the water birds are the the birds aren't doing doing quite so well, but every year a pair of of um, of, of great crested grebe um, will you know will still will still breed there, and I, and I make an effort to try and you know let people know where the nest site is and, and dog walkers and things to try and stay away from letting the letting the dogs thunder into the water next to the nest site. But it's a uh, yeah a yeah, bit of a bit of a challenge, but they'll, they they usually get a you know get a get a brood away about there the, the great crested grebes. So this was a bit of a Bit of a throwback this one i wonder how many, if any of you managed to you know to see the the juvenile night heron at dowdswell from from 1995 this is one of the first sort of rare birds i ever saw in here and i remember driving past and seeing a group of birders on the on the a40 looking through the fence thinking what on earth you know what's there so i you know said i'll ask mum and dad to drop me off and uh yeah had a, had a look at uh, had a look at the the young night heron that was there all those years ago and then yeah, this was sent this photo a number of years uh, years later, taken by uh, I think Richard Tyler took this photo of the of the night heron from Dowdswell. And since then, I was yeah hooked on uh, hooked on the place, cycling up there and um, and just enjoying finding the wildlife. And yeah, it's it, 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 one of the joys of working your own patch is that you never know what will what will turn up. Um, and and on, on in 2010, the water level at Dowdswell dropped dramatically, and I. And I often you know, wish it would again. I would love it there to be more exposed mud more often on Dowdswell. And I remember on the on the 29th of September, I get into trouble actually, because I remember the anniversary of the of the Wilson's Phalarope, sometimes a, a, a little quicker than I remember my wedding anniversary, but <laughs> I get into trouble for that. But on the 29th of September, 2010, I went up to the reservoir and wandering around at the far end on the mud was this tiny little wade with bright yellow legs. And I thought, crikey, you know, you know I, I, I'm onto something here, and we crept through the reeds. Um, I had amazing views of this Wilson's phalarope, a very rare bird, and um, it should be migrating from North to South America, and ended up on on Dowdswell. And it was amazing that year. It was the first year that 
for you know, and it hasn't really happened since that the water levels dropped that low to expose so much mud. But as soon as it did, there was Dunlin came in and Snipe and um, yeah, you know, green sandpiper and and then and then this the Wilson's follow-up. So birds find birds certainly find it, and that was a um, yeah thrill to find that bird. It's one of the reasons why you keep checking your own little patch just in just in case something drops in. Lovely Drake Gusanda. And again, when when we have cold water movements of birds, when when it's cold in Europe or you know, and, and also in the UK, when bodies of water freeze over, birds have to move, um, and that's a good play, good time to check your local water bodies to see uh, see if anything's come in. And I, we still occasionally get goosanders dropping in onto onto Dowdswell. And a couple of years ago, had a had a red-breasted maganza as well, which is a, a very unusual inland bird. So you never know um, what what you can find there. Crossbills in the in in the, in the woodland there at uh, is you know, fairly frequently at uh, at Dowdswell. And uh, and had osprey on passage as well. There was a chance of uh, of an osprey passing passing through. And even a few years ago, the the the, the vegetation at the far end, the um, you know willows growing up, and the area getting a bit bit longer, and and, and sed sedgy grasses at the end. There's a, um, a lovely grasshopper warbler dropped in and and uh, and sang away for a, for a, for a few days, which was a, which was a treat. So yeah, there's 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 lots to enjoy. Um, and uh, and we, we used to put yeah, tins down for for for, for grass snakes. Um, there's a lovely close up of a of a, of a of a grass snake there. So that's Dowdswell and also Cleve Common, which you'll all be very familiar with. That's an area I've watched over the years. I don't get even the chance now. With I've got two young two young boys, th three and one, so I don't I don't get out on my patches quite as much as I as I used to. But I used to spend all my spare time traipsing around Cleve, searching for. You know, searching for uh, you know, searching for all the wildlife there, and um, yeah, particularly you know, in the you know one of the one of the stars of the season was always the ring oozers, of course, which everyone heads up there for. And it's a photo I took a few years ago of five males in in in, in one of the ash trees up there, which was uh, which was rather special. So I, I love heading to water into the high points, and uh, so yeah, we soon be um, you know, oozer season passing through. And yeah, yeah, I always think of you know, late March through through April. Um, the the ringus will pass through on their way north. They won't they won't breed up there, but they'll just drop in for two to three weeks, um, and uh, and then carry on their way north. So always a treat to find them. Um, wheat ears, um, you know, good numbers of wheat ears drop in on, you know, drop in on Cleve. Um, interesting with the, you know, the 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 stone chats, and um, we'll um, you know keep keeping tabs on their, you know, on their, on their breeding. You know, they're breeding up there. Some years we'll have you know. Uh, um, typically, the numbers of, of, of stone just breeding up there is, 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 has come down over the years. But yeah, occasionally we have you know, three, four pairs in the in the main sort of you know, you know, cleave area, of the, you know, the the actual common out, out, out from the masts. Um, you know, keeping an eye on them. Young young stone chat there, um, recently fledged, and wind chats passing through. Um, you know, in, in the autumn, it's quite a quite a feature upon cleave. So again, um, lots to enjoy, uh, as, as as you'll know, getting up there and and, and you know, you know, working on the reserves and enjoying enjoying what's to be found up on our up on our local local patches. Red starts as well, um, breeding on the you know around the Bill Smiley Reserve and those lower slopes, breeding in, in in good numbers. And and a red start last year. Some of you that it was uh, was was brilliant seeing you know coming up to our, our land, which I'll come to in a moment. And a red start singing very close to to our to our land last year, um, which was uh, which was great for the, for the first time. So sort of on the you know, on the on the lower slopes, so they're they're, they're doing well. What a lovely, lovely bird they are. And again, you never know what you can find. So I was lucky enough to find this this doctoral up there um, a number of years ago. Found a yeah found found two doctoral up on Cleve. Um, and you yeah you never know. Keep checking the birds that uh, for, for for birds dropping in. So the the male is a uh, is 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 less brightly coloured than the than the female with doctorals. So thinking this is a this was a male. There was a recently laid pipeline in the very rocky area. Um, and uh, and yeah, he, he dropped in for for a few days, and that was a, a real thrill to find uh, to see Doctoral up on Cleve. That's Greg scoping it, and then an autumn bird as well on their way, you know, moving back south, dropping in on the on the golf course over there. So I I work I check the golf course quite a bit, and and uh, and, and work work that area, and also the area around the you know the um, you know the heather enclosure and down the gallops as well. Just do a few circuits around there, and great to keep. Um, yeah, keep tabs on the you know the you know on the adder population. 
um, particularly just around the masts. I tend to just walk around there looking on the edge of the gorse um, at the right time of year to, uh, you know, to, you know, to, to watch out for adder, like lovely female adder here, um, yeah, coming out and basking. So a few slides even closer to home. Some of you will be familiar with this after yesterday. It was great to have some of you up, our, um, up, on, up on our land um, in, in Charlton Kings and in Mill Lane yesterday doing a bit of, uh, bit of management. Some of the uh, some of the fields got a bit out of uh, a bit out of control, so it was great to to come to, to, to have you there and, and uh, having a bit of a go at managing the managing the land. So we've got around ten acres, um, which we you know, which uh, our family bought around uh, around twenty five years ago now. I've had it for a long time, and over and over the years, myself, my brother in particular, have have, have, have turned yeah it, the whole thing into a nature reserve really, but but certainly a, um, a a chunk of it, planting trees and hedge lines, putting up lots of bird boxes. And it's our own little nature reserve, really, and it's been great fun just recording everything that's, you know, that's uh, the, the, the breeds there, that's, that's visited, and just you know everything the the, the birds, the butterflies, the mammals. Um, yeah, just a, a really fun project, and, and great for some of you to to see it yesterday. Um, here's Greg, who's a my um, brother, who's a, a tree surgeon, um, so it helps with with uh, with roping up trees and putting bird boxes up, and um, it's just the yeah, a kestrel box we put up a, a, a few years ago. And we've had yeah, great success with a whole range of different species. So um, a young barn owl that, uh, that, that bred, I mean, one, in a natural hole in one of our really lovely, um, you know, old oak trees that we have up there. Um, barn, owls, barn owls bred, this was back in, back in 2013. So it's been a few years, unfortunately, that was the, they, they bred that year and didn't return to that nest, to, the, to that site the year after, we don't know why, um, but uh, yeah, lovely to have them if we were managed to bring them back. I've just installed a, um, a, a barn owl box, um, an, another barn owl box recently. Little owls um, are, are, are seen on our land and just um, just the fields just adjacent uh, to us now. And tawny owls are, are, are very, are very frequently seen you know, breeding actually on our, you know, on our land. Um, and a great way to find tawny owl, this is one of my favorite photos from last year, is to listen for alarm calling um, birds. So this, this song thrush was, we would have clearly found the, the roof site um, of this of this tawny way up in an oak tree and was really giving it some stick to so find the alarm call and typically then you're, you you find the tawny owls up a, you know, up, up on our field and it's a, it's a brilliant place to go for for tawny owls I've had better few views of them there than 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 any, anywhere else and uh, and the little owlets can be free, seen seen quite easily um, at, at, at the right time of year of course so yeah lo lovely to see them. Red kites. This is a, um, a, a, a photo taken down by telescope um, you know, last year of, of, of red kites breeding in a pine tree just outside the, the boundary of our uh, of our field, and uh, and you know, submitting the record. They're saying it's the most sort of you know the the, the nest site sort of closest to to Cheltenham, one of the one of the more western um, yeah you know, breeding sites for for, for for red kites in the in the county. So really thrilled to, to have to have them. Um, nesting so close to our land. And I remember you're heading to Mid Wales um, back in back in 1997. It was to to, to first see red kites, and who'd have thought that they would now be so you know so widespread and breeding, um, yeah, pretty much on our own land. And it's, it was great to scope in and just follow the follow the the the, you know, the progress. Um, and two young, two young successfully fledged um, last year. Um, yeah, brilliant. Planting hedge, hedgerows. Um, this was yeah, 11 years ago, and then it's a really nice hawthorn hedge with uh, um, with, with with a few elms in, in amongst them, and a nice wild flower strip here, which has really enhanced the the site. Here, yeah, one, one another shot of our of our hedgerows, and uh, John will recognise the the elm there that we planted a um, a few years ago, which is great. I said lots of boxes. We've got over 40 bird boxes up, and um, it seems to be on our 10 acres. We'll have 14 or 15 pairs of, of, uh, of, of either blue tit or great tit. Um, it's, that seems to be the sort of capacity of, of, of the birds using the boxes and then a few more pairs using, using natural holes. So a very young brood of blue tits there. Um, slightly, slightly, uh, slightly older and then, and then almost ready for fledging. And it's typically sort of you know, six, ten. We've even had you know nests with up to you know twelve young in. So you can have big broods of 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 of, of, um, of, of blue tits um, and, and and great tits here as well. So we make lots of our own boxes, 
and uh, and, and and monitor the uh, you know the how, how the how the how the you know, blue tits and great tits fare. We also have marsh tits um, breeding on our breeding on our land as well, but not in not in the boxes. We'll also monitor the slow worms. Um, so there's a female slow worm here, with, which is quite brown, with a brown line down the back. And these these youngsters, little bars of gold. These um, these are uh, you know, lo lovely little uh, little reptiles. Um, yeah, legless lizards, of course. They've got eyelids, which which snake snakes do you know don't have. Um, so they're, they're they're lizards essentially. We've got a really nice population of of slow worms up there, and and grass snake as well. Um, it's uh, yeah, great great to see. Butterfly wise, um, beautiful small copper here, which we which we uh, can see you know, throughout the year having multiple broods. We can see them, um, yeah, almost almost at any time um, you know, during you know, from sort of yeah April through to sort of I think we saw one in late October last year. Very very good for for the grassland butterflies. Marbled marbled white here and and meadow browns and ringlets. And we're just trying to improve the site for for the you know for, for the blues in particular. Good for skippers as well. Essex skipper here and 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 small skipper and large skipper all found on our on our land. Um, and as I was saying, we're just trying to improve it for the for the blues, common blue and brown argus. We're trying to trying to to, to, you know, to, to get a, a larger population of, of those species, getting some, you know, you know, ripping up the ground a little bit, trying to get more. There's a lots of, uh, of, of truffle there, but it's uh, I think we need some some uh, some shorter grassland area. But it's uh, yeah, great fun trying to enhance the site and, and manage the area. The, the, the oaks are alive with 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 purple hair streaks, um, you know, jinking and dancing around in the tops of of, of pretty much all our oaks. Um, so you know, great place to see them. So lots and lots going on, and it's uh, yeah, it's great to have them on our own land. We'll have a feeding station through the winter for you know for to, to bring in all sorts of siskins and and red pole and red pole and siskin siskin and, and goldfinch here. And um, we'll often get good numbers of red pole coming in some years feeding on the. Um, particularly on the Niger seed put out on the tables, brambling um, on the feeders as well. And really pleasing to have quite a, quite a, you know, the bounce back in green finches um, in particular. So we'll often have a you know, double figure you know, green finches coming into the, the feeding station and then they'll be breeding in the in in the in the, in, the, in our hedgerows as well. Um, so really, really great to have ever increasing numbers actually the last few years of, of, of green finches. And in an evasion year for the hawfinch, even a hawfinch dropped into our field, and we've we converted a shed into a hide and managed to have a have a good look at a at a hawfinch on our own land, which was a real which was a real thrill. So that's a a little bit on our, our land, which some of you saw yesterday, and you're always welcome to yeah to if you if you want to have a wander around somewhere new, yeah go get up there and 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 have a have a mooch around and um, and enjoy it. It's great to have great to have people going up there. I've got a number of tins down for. Um, for the reptiles and for the small mammals um, to, to have a look at. Even had a, a weasel nest under one of our tins um, up there up there recently. So on a couple of occasions, lift, lifted the tin um, and, a, and a weasel shot out, which was, which was pretty cool. Um, so uh, yeah, lo lo lots to enjoy up there. So I'm just gonna finish, um, potentially going a little bit over time, but uh, yeah, I've got another 10 minutes or so on, on camera trapping. Um, and uh, I love camera trapping. And uh, just a bit of an introduction to that. So this is the this is the model I currently use. I've had lots of camera traps over the years. Some have been taken by water rising more, you know, faster than I than I imagined it would, and, and things like that. And uh, and uh, this is this is the model I currently use. It's it's the brand is Ape Man. It might not sound too professional, but it's one of the more sort of you know, one of you know, one of the cheaper um, you know, models, but still does a really a really great job. Um, and you don't, uh, yeah. Some of some of the other, you know, I've had bushnels over the years that are quite a bit more expensive, and you you worry about the leaving them out of it. So I've often got a camera trap left left at Dowdswell, and a camera trap looking over, um, you know, up the field, and also, um, yeah, in, in the garden. So just leaving them out there twenty four seven to to see what uh, to see what comes in. We found some some great species over the years. Lovely water rail here. So I had a yeah had a, had a camera trap at Dowdswell in the reed bed at the top of Dowdswell. Really. You know, tucked away, waded into the river, put a stake in the river, and, and had a camera trap just looking over this this one rock here for for, for quite a long period, and then just popped up every couple of weeks, changed the SD card, and uh, and then see where you see what you found. And of course, it's the, it's triggered by the motion of the of the bird moving in front of the yeah in, in front of the camera trap. 
Um, you need to be aware of obviously any grasses or reeds moving, which will trigger it and fill your SD card with wobbling reeds and use up all your battery, which is always frustrating. Um, but once you clear an area, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing what results you can, uh, you can have. So that same rock again, we proved there was water rail in there, which was very unusual a number of years ago. We know they're there now. Um, and also the water rail breed in that little reed bed at the top of, uh, of Dowdswell as well, with this uh, a juvenile water rail, which of course you just, uh, you just don't see, um, you, know, you know, for real. But the but the eyes of the camera trap can can tell you that so it's a, it's a brilliant bit of kit of course for recording what's around that same rock again there's a stoat you have to start using a bit of imagination on some of these slides um <laughs> but that that, that 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 is a that is a stoat feeding in the in the rebed there on one, uh, working through probably chasing a um yeah, a moorhen or, or a rail through there and even more imagination for this one um I'm pretty sure this is a, this is a water shrew um, on that on that same rock again. So it's amazing the number of species recorded on that one one little rock in the in the, in the middle of the the reed bed there. Um, very pale below, distinct sort of cut off from the dark above, um, and not surprising of course you know with the water there and seeing them under under tins uh, at Dowswell um, on, a, on on a number of occasions. It takes nice stills as well, so I usually have it set on. On, on photo mode because the batteries last so much longer if you just use it on fo for for photos um, and uh, yeah it's, it's great just for yeah for recording you know recording what's there a roe deer nibbling on a dandelion there and if you want to have a little go on on videos this is the sort of you know footage you can you can expect exactly that same view again and that same rock the munchak deer. Grey heron right in front of the, the camera trap and it's always amazed. Lots of birds, there's small LED um, sensor, the LED lights on the front of the camera trap, but most species will just you know be oblivious to it really and not really react. Sometime, you know, occasionally. Had, 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 had species notice it, but the grey herons are so, such so sharp um, eyesight. They'll often spot the camera trap as they walk past the, the river channel and this and just stare at it for <laughs> endlessly and just fill the SD card with videos and photos of, 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 you know, of grey heron. So this one was just fascinated by the camera trap, staring at that little red, little red light. So what will happen is we'll take a video or a photo uh, uh, and then have a, have, a, have a gap of a couple of seconds and take another 20 second video. So again, if it's if it stood in front of it for a, for a long time, it will yeah, soon, uh, soon fill the camera up. And mandarins, um, I didn't realize that mandarins sort of you know, bred there. And uh, again, it's a bit of a grainy video. It's a, a pair of pair of mandarin duck at the top of uh, that was a few, a few years ago. Now I've got some more recent videos coming up. I'd later seen with, with, with Young as well up there. And a little bit, bit of, little bit of footage of that adult water rail. What I was most excited about a number of years ago now was just was first proving. I'd seen otter um, yeah, sprained up, up, up at Dowdswell, but to get them on the camera trap for the first time was a, was a real thrill. And this was the first you know, video that we ever managed, you know, first footage we ever managed of, of otters um, at Dowdswell. And we've, had, we've taken loads of videos ever since um, of, of the otters there. And the, yeah, in 2020, I finally saw saw, saw them for real um, on, on the water. They're very, very nocturnal over the years. There, we've always had them you know, midnight, one, two, three o'clock in the morning. But just recently, they've seemed to be coming coming out more in the more in the daytime. I saw them in in 2020. My brother Greg saw them um, last year um, 
you know, in the, in the daytime. So they're certainly doing well, aren't they, otters? Um, you know, you know, nationwide, um, and and certainly in in in, in the county. So yeah, re really great to see. And again, although you're not going to win any awards for you know the, the video, but it proved that there was um, it was the first sort of proof that there was more than one. This video back in 2014 of three animals passing through, um, and uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant animals. This one underneath the the bridge at the the top of the the, the top pool, just just scent marking, just sprinting and marking its territory. And I've sort of tried to set camera traps up through the stream, heading up into um, Scob Grove, as they as, it, as it's called, just trying to figure out what their movements. But uh, pretty tricky to track them through the through the habitat. And these small recent ones from from 2020, some nice close ups and a couple of a bit of daytime activity as well. And in fact, that the, the otter there, that, the video there, that, that, that animal passed through just 15 minutes before I turned up to change the SD card. So I was very, very close to <laughs> intercepting the, uh, in the animal, but it was a close but no cigar. We, we, we popped the, the, the camera trap out. This is up our field on our, on our land um, to a badger there. And recently, um, polecat as well. Another uh, species I think, is, I, th I think is doing well, the mustelids in general. Um, uh, are doing quite well, but we had a, a, a string of, 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 of recent sightings of, of, of polecat on the on the camera trap on our on our land, and also a woodcock here. Again, you need to maybe you know, squint a little bit and uh, use some imagination. But there is a, a woodcock there, um, again on our on our land this uh, yeah this winter, which is which is great. So it's, it's amazing what you can find with them. Just popping it the camera trap in your back garden. So I used to. Where, where, where I lived previously on um, on, on Croft Road in, in, in Charlton Kings, and uh, this is what you what you all signed up for tonight: a, a hedgehog scratching its back with its incredibly flexible back leg. There, I never realised that when this short little stumpy tail. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed enjoyed monitoring the the uh, the hedgehogs in the, in our in our garden there. And yeah, pop some water out, pop your camera trap on it, see what see what comes in. Lovely little hedgehog. And again, popping it on badger sets just to see if they're active. It's, it's good fun, this one. Clearly a, a sow here, and it very much, very much was active. And now we're just in the garden, I have a badger coming in. And our new house on, you know, on, on Detmore. Hoovering up the peanuts, and my, my I, I include this slide. This was a I, I, wherever I travel in the world, I, I have a I have a, um, a camera trap, and we were we were in the, the Torres del Paine National Park in Chile um, after after pumas. And we came across a guanaco kill, um, and I thought, well, we're, we're passing back here in three days. We'll, we'll we'll stop and pick up the camera trap. Then pop the camera trap on the kill, um, and sure enough, pumas came back to that guanaco. I got some really nice footage of, of, the, of, of these amazing big cats. So it's the, I think my finest camera trapping moment was uh, getting yeah, pumas and actually had three animals visiting the, the, the carcass. Amazing. Beautiful animals. Yeah, badger coming in, as I mentioned, to the, to the, uh, to the window. And, of course, during this crazy time, of, which we're thankfully coming out of now, but you know, during the, the lockdown times, we weren't even allowed really out. You're barely allowed out of our of our gardens. So I really turned my attention to trying to figure out a bit more, learn a bit more about about our bees, which I've really not you know, not got a great knowledge of at all. We've I've had bee hotels up with the you know red mason bees coming in, but uh, yeah, had this had, had a had a. a you know, a first for Gloucestershire and, uh, and quite a, a rare bee nationally, a, a European orchard bee came in. I, I didn't identify it myself. I saw it, I thought, well, this looks, this looks different and put it out there for those more knowledgeable than, than I am to identify. And it turned out to be, yeah, a, a European orchard bee and remarkably then went on to breed in my, in my bee hotel. I managed to sort of 
document, take photos of the of the egg. It would lay on the on the on the pollen sack and you know, you know fill up the holes with you know with with, with mud. And um, yeah, they 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 emerge. The next generation emerge the next year. Uh, the males first and the female, and it was just great fun. Um, just just yeah, watching watching them. So it's been actually great to sort of dial in a little bit even more so on 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 the you know, on what's on what's on the doorstep. And I love badgers. <laughs> Another badger slide from 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 Lilybrook. I spent quite a lot of time during the lockdown period, sort of cycling and walking up to Lilybrook Golf Course while it was uh, while it was closed. Had a word with the greenkeeper and sort of said, "Oh yeah, do go, you know, do what you want really. Go and go and explore." Um, and uh, and yeah, this is one frosty morning. A badger at a, at a, a late back to the set came char came charging past me, and I was up there for this bird in particular. I fancied it for years. Um, up there, a uh, lesser spotted woodpecker, and it was a chance to get in there when it's quiet, no golfers around for that for that time. I'd cycle around and, 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 and walk around and had a, um, a female lesser spot drumming um, and, and calling, and I sort of watched her pretty much most mornings for about three weeks, um, and, 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 and again um, last year, but I've not proved that there's a male, unfortunately. It's been, been, a, been a female um, that I've followed, so fingers crossed this year, it's getting to lesser spot season so I'm going to uh, yeah get in there again and have a have a look around but there's so much to enjoy on your doorstep um, and uh, yeah there's a there's a no need to go far there's a, an awful lot for us to enjoy so I'm going to leave it there um, that's a, the final slide of, of of me showing my son Max a lesser spotted woodpecker down my telescope um, up on Lilybrook thanks for listening thanks for inviting me along I um, hope you've enjoyed that and um, yeah any questions at all just uh, yeah please uh, please fire away